My guests on this week's episode of Southern Search are Garrett French and James Worth, respectively the founder and senior director at Citation Labs. For my entire SEO career, the most important ranking signal for SEOs to consider is how to generate links from third-party websites. The quest for more links or higher quality links or new link building tactics are all topics that captivate the attention of SEOs on blogs, conference presentations, and podcasts. Garrett and James are among the world's leading experts on link building. Garrett literally co-wrote the book on link building titled The Ultimate Guide to Link Building. I'll start our conversation talking about the book, which is a dream for strategists. Garrett's co-author was the late, great Eric Ward, AKA Link Moses. We'll spend some time talking about Eric, as well as the early days of link building. James is a veteran link builder and a fount of knowledge himself. James will provide awesome, actionable tips for link prospecting, link outreach, and tools to do the job. Grab something cold to drink and join me for a conversation with Garrett French and James Worth. We'll talk about why links remain such an important ranking signal after all these years. We'll chat about Garrett's tool, Zip Sprout. We'll talk a little bit about a legendary sushi dinner in Seattle. Garrett French and James Worth, welcome to Southern Search. How you guys doing? Hey, Thanks, fantastic. Mark. Thanks for having us today, Mark. Yeah, good to be here. Well, it's great to have you guys on. I'm excited for this one. I have uh, a lot of topics to go over. I want to start with um, a book you have, Garrett. So the alt- the book is The Ultimate Guide to Link Building. And uh, we were given copies. Everyone at Search Lab has read this book now, so we're big proponents of it. First thing I want to talk about is a word about your co-author. So Eric Ward, a.k.a. Link Moses. How did you and Eric get linked up in the first place? And what was it like working with him on this on this project? Linked up. Eric was wonderful. Um, Missed the hell out of him. Uh, Still still think of him as the godfather of link building. Um, He, I think, if I remember correctly, uh, we had. You know, I was publishing in Search Engine Land, and this was in 2010 or so, uh, lots of stuff about link building. And so really, if you were on Twitter and you were in Search Engine Land and you were talking about link building, it was a very small, you know, uh, group of people who were doing those 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 uh, three things. Eric was one of them. I was, too. And so we sort of started, I think, kind of retweeting each other's stuff and kind of, I think, more or less met on social media. I don't think we'd ever met in person. I, I might have attended uh, a conference that he was at, but I think at that time I was, you know, kind of doing conference reporting. This is back, you know, two thousand four, maybe five. Um, but uh, we we started chatting, and then he <laughs> approached me and said, "Hey, look, I've got this book opportunity, and I'd love you for you to help." And um, I had already been doing a lot of writing for Search Engine Lane and been thinking already in terms of a larger piece. And so it was a lot of then, you know, kind of uh, heavy lifting around getting my stuff up to snuff, getting, um, you know, some of Eric's stuff from him actually written. Uh, he, he was an amazing creative and, and not in the content side necessarily, but in thinking about who could we ask for a link from? Who would make sense right. to um, uh, link to this website or uh, link to this page? You know, who's out there? So he was always so fun to brainstorm yeah. with. And that's what we really connected around, was just uh, kind of collaborative brainstorms. And that's one of the things I really miss about him. But we would have, we did one webinar where we just had people send us their uh, stuff they wanted, um, uh, or their, their websites, and we would just run through the list and brainstorm. We each had five minutes, and we'd each come up with an idea, rip off the other guy, and then and then go on to the next one. Uh, and so it was just a lot of fun to um, uh, you know unpack uh, link approaches with him. And he had just been doing it so long before Google. And this was the other piece about him that was so wonderful. Um, he really got uh, link building as this, you know, he, he called himself a, a um, content publicist. Yeah. So I think he was kind of doing the digital PR thing, but, you know, back before Google was even even around. Jeff, one of my favorite uh, sort of stories about him is, is this email, and he shared it with me. I think we put it in the, in the book also, in the second edition anyways, 
was this email he got back from Jeff Bezos saying, great job on the campaign helping me launch Amazon. I mean, this is that's who Eric Ward was. I mean, he was the guy, the only guy for link building, uh, you know, and it was this was an era when um, web PR was really the only thing that there was. So uh, there wasn't link building per se, you know, when he really first started. Uh, so he was he was, you know, a, at the big there at the beginning uh, and, and just a, a wonderful kind of mentor and, and guide for me and really expanded my understanding uh, and, and, th and thinking around uh, using um, uh, advanced operators in prospecting and link prospecting. Um, so he was phenomenal at that too, at looking at patterns and URL strings and saying, what can we isolate here and throw in an in URL colon um, operator on, in, a, in a Google query to really dial in the prospects. So a lot of what I learned from him was thinking about how do we pre-qualify our, our prospects based on the queries we're running in Google. It was phenomenal uh, and he was just absolutely a, uh, a, a fantastic uh, resource for me and, and, the, and the, the SEO community. Absolutely, yeah, and I mean, words like legend get thrown around too easily, but in, in his case, it certainly was true. I, I mean, we could have a very long podcast discussion about this book, so I'm actually gonna try and like have a strategy around my questions so we can we can cherry pick some topics but <laughs> you know let me start here and uh, James, feel free to, to jump in as well. Lord, that'd be fun you know, you know throughout my my whole career and I started in 2007 people have been predicting you know link building will become less and less important and the only thing that's been absolutely consistent for 14 13 years is that links are one of the most if not the most important determinant of success in Google you know Guys, what is it about Google that Google that makes links so essential to their search results? What what about links are? It's like this undefeated streak of being the most important quality in every study you see about SEO. I'm gonna I'm gonna let James take a swing at that one. That's a great question. <laughs> uh, he actually started in SEO in the late '90s. James, is that right? I mean, this, this we, guy. We, we, we didn't have the phrase SEO, but yeah. I know he so looks younger started. than me, but he's, he's secretly he's not. Okay. He, he's he's you do look old very young. I, SEO for I did not. Sure. I wouldn't have pegged you for that. I thought you he's a, like right? thirty-two. Yeah. I mean, like. Thank you. I, pre I appreciate 34. that. Yeah. Nice. T tip tip of the drink to you, sir, for that one. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, it's it's interesting. I, I wish we knew more about what Google found in the, in the tests that they've done, which we know about where they pulled links out of the equation and the results were suboptimal. You know, I, I love data. That's, that's my, kind of my part of, the, uh, of things, looking at data, how we use it in terms of the pages that we want to focus on in a link building campaign, as well as how we measure impact of our campaigns uh, also. And so th the data piece is the, and finding the stories from the data is my favorite part. Uh, I don't think we know enough to know uh, how badly it got when they did do those tests to take links out, but we do know that every time they've attempted that, uh, they've had to they've had to roll that back or or not move forward with that you know with with uh, productionalizing that test and so from that perspective w there are some pretty clear indications that the you know the the trust factor that we get which is a big part of the Google quality rater guidelines so we know that that's something that they're always working on uh, especially when we look at one version to the next to the next how they focus more and more on EAT and trustworthiness generally. Um, so from that perspective, we know it's important. Just from a popularity perspective, you, you know, they only have, they have a lot of data points, but th the data points are still finite. So they're getting something really valuable, or I should say we as searchers or consumers are getting something really valuable out of having that layer or that dimension, and it's obviously multifaceted, but that dimension of, of links, that popularity score, you know, we, we, uh, not we, but plenty of people, the industry tries to game it in different ways, um, but it really comes down to that being a significant factor. And, uh, and so that, we've got links. That's an exciting, uh, I, thank you for, thank you, James. I really, you said it, I couldn't have said it like that. But I, but I was thinking as you were talking, and I love that question mark, because it really has been, um, you know, from the start, it's been the links that have made the difference. I mean, I, rem I do remember searching Google when they first came out. Uh, in, when I was in college, and just blown away by it was it was eerie how how effective the the, the search was. 
Um, and so I, I think there is some uh, human, you know, the, 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 when, when a writer cites something and links to it, they are uh, contextualizing it or, or giving Google some signal that it's that outside, I guess it's the outside vote uh, uh, that, that is, is quintessential to understanding how to rank, how to rank something. Um, but I think James said it more eloquently, but there, there's, there's, uh, yeah, uh, um, I don't know. <laughs> Mark, I don't know. I get it. I get it. Uh, Why can't they find something else to figure out which, which result to put up above the other? Yeah. And it's, it's the relatedness of these pages in, 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 uh, their importance, um, to one against the other. Uh, and, and then another, if another human actually, uh, you know, links to this page, then, then that is highly significant. It is yeah. a significant moment. It's a significant choice, uh, authorial choice by a human author that uh, is, is, is very, very useful to, for, for ranking things, apparently. But it's almost like what, what a great the... question. I should know. I should be like, <laughs> yeah. I should have that. It's almost like the links are the the binding of a book, where all the pages right. of the book are web web pages yeah. or websites yeah. all over, and it's like the binding. Links are like the binding of the book, bringing everything together. I like that, James. Yeah, very good. So yeah, me too. I want I want to return to the book for just a minute. It's it's two hundred and sixty pages in the in the copy that we have, two hundred sixty plus, I believe, and it's all about link building. What I like about it most is that a lot of the content around link building is very tactical. And this is really a book for strategists. It's about how to really run a campaign. Um, you know, I want to, like I said at the beginning, I want to kind of cherry pick some of those topics if I could. But the first one was sure. how to just do a, a link building campaign design. I think this is a, a mistake I've seen, I've made. I'll, I'll just put it that way rather than uh, say, say <laughs> other people have. Um, you know, this oh, kind of wait. fire ready aim isn't a great, great strategy, a great way to do link building. Yeah. Give our audience some idea of why it's so important to design your link building campaign before you just launch into outreach and prospecting and all those sorts of things that are really fun. Whew. Um, that's a wonderful, wonderful question. Um, and we really start that in a couple different ways. Uh, we've, we've really been leaning into um, campaign design around building links to sales pages. This is where the market's been pushing us. Uh, we, this is where there's a huge, I would say, opportunity in the market from a services perspective because uh, so many folks are kind of leaning into the digital PR, uh, you know, big content, um, name brand linkers kind of kind of play. Um, and bo but both of them hinge on solving a publisher need, um, on, on delivering something to the publisher that's going to be useful and provide them with value. And it's also not money, uh, so that's that's the you know I would say at the kind of the core of, of campaign design is really who are our potential target publishers and what are we going to be offering them that's going to result in the, uh, you know a link for us, uh, and I, that's what I really it's it's funny this is almost all not it really isn't funny but when when I see someone who's, who's getting started there's very little it's just they think the link is going to happen. And it's like thinking you're going to be able to walk in a store, you know, or, you know, walk on a car lot and be able to get a car without any money at all. And so it's, you, you don't have anything really to offer. You don't understand why that publisher publishes. Um, and knowing that, though, enables you to back into what should we be offering that's going to benefit the publisher and also enable us to have a linking a link moment or a citation moment within whatever you know, kind of publishing event happens. Um, so, but all that said, um, we do have, a, we do think a lot about uh, campaign design, campaign process, especially. We're at 160 people now, so we really have to, we have to have our ducks in a row uh, when we're, when we're uh, executing for our clients. Um, so really our starting point now has become more and more what is our target? What is a target page? How do we um, select a target page that's going to that, that we want to have increase its rankings, um, and then we kind of design campaigns from there. Uh, that's been our the, the approach we've been pursuing. It's not necessarily represented in the book. It's not 
not represented in the book, but it's definitely a, you know, kind of a, a, a evolution for us uh, since, since we wrote the book. But I would, I would say, I, 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 would, I believe, I haven't read the book in a while, <laughs> but I believe um, it's, 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 you know, knowing, having the asset, having designed a linkable asset, or for our, in our case, have, knowing our, uh, how we're going to be linking uh, to a target, um, potentially target sales page, is, uh, our, is always our starting point. And then from there, it's, it's, it's a balancing act with what publishers would potentially link to this, not who do we want to link to this. I love, that's another differentiation I would make, is not who do we want. It's a great question to ask, but it's, it's really more who it would potentially link to us. And I think that's another kind of you know, starting point, you know, uh, you know, beginning link builder uh, assumption is we're just going to get out there and we're going to aim for you know CNN or something like that and we're going to get in it uh, and and really it's it's a lot more about what is the page what is the asset we're able to uh, put into play here and then how are we going to be able to um, turn that into a either a piece of content or a pitch uh, or a concept that's going to get this publisher to hit publish. Mm -hmm. And it's about serving the publisher's needs. And I think these are the pieces from a campaign design perspective that are very frequently missing. And I hear them talked about in digital, from the digital PR side, but we're definitely, you know, we're, we're definitely different in, in our approach. We, we really do focus on, on large, uh, larger volumes of links uh, from, from lots of publishers. And so um, we, we really, but, but I think at the fundamentally, the, the, the approach is very similar. Who's the publisher? What do they want? How do we give them what they want while also serving our needs, which is a link? And so it's, it really is, it's, it's very simple. It, 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 it can be that simple. Uh, um, and when I get a chance to revise the book, I will be doing that in, in edition three and really trying to clarify because my, I mean, that's the other thing is, is I'm, a, I'm in practice, you know, Citation Labs is in practice. We're always working, always changing process, always learning and growing. And so that, I think we published in 2018. I think it, the second edition came out 2018. I'm going to have to go check with these guys uh, and, and, hey, you know, version three, edition three, we've got some changes to make. Uh, but yeah. James, can you speak a little bit as well? Um, well or actually, you know what, Mark, if, if that's enough. I was, I was actually going to stop with some of the feedback I get sometimes when I talk to, we get down a rabbit hole and there are some things that I, we say and then people go, what is a linkable asset? Or they'll, they'll say something like that. So <laughs> I want to just kind of step back and maybe James, you could help us there. For, for those who don't know, what is an example of a linkable asset? How are these used in, in a link building campaign? Yeah, that, that's a, that's a great, uh, uh, question and in, an important one too. It's essentially what's the justification for a for a er, earning a link on, to that page kind of thing. What is the unique element, the data, the information, the study, the comparison? You know, the the pricing or the reviews. Something that we need to have a little a little bit of uh, meat to, so that we can. Th that we could justify essentially the link to that page. We're gonna we're gonna go ask this publisher to link to this page. What's in it for them? What's in it for the publisher? Kind of thing. And so from from that perspective, we are looking for some element. Um, w one example that we've been using lately. Uh, because it's top of mind. I just bought a new couch, and one of my favorite brands is IKEA. So I bought this IKEA couch that I've wanted for a while. And uh, so from a sofa perspective, you know th they could uh, depending on what the context of that page is, they could be giving me some sort of tool or helpful suggestion. Um, it could be FAQs, but we could get more creative than that as well and find some something on that page that's going to resonate with me, depending on what I'm looking for. Uh, I have a couple of kids, so maybe it's you know seating arrangements for quality family time or something like that. Some elements on that page, citable elements or linkable asset that is going to hook that publisher in and say, okay, yeah, that's something that that's share worthy, essentially. I get it. Well, very cool. Um, all right. So I, I kind of want to, I don't want to go too, too far into this. Like I, I want to keep on this idea of a linkable asset for a minute. Um, as we're going through a strategy, one of the things that I've, I've had this experience before where it's like, we want to create 
new content and new linkable assets so quickly that we never bother to do any analysis on what's already there. Um, one of the things that, that you guys have talked about before is to do an analysis of, of your linkable assets to make sure you've got something, you, you know what you already have, so that perhaps you can skip some steps in the game. You know, how do you actually recommend people do that analysis? What I would come back to, I, was, I would come all the way back around to what are the objectives of why are we spending money on link building? Mm -hmm. Why are we going to build a team? Why are we going to hire an agency? What is our goal with this spend? What return are we looking for? Are we looking for brand visibility? Are we looking to uh, impact rankings on very specific uh, URLs that uh, if we rank higher, we can make a lot of a lot more money? Uh, so that's going to be how I would approach uh, kind of designing the tasks mm -hmm. around uh, kind of asset analysis. Right. Um, for, on the brand side, you're going to be asking a lot more questions like what you know, you're going to be looking at the press section or the blog, like, what have we been writing about? Have we done any big studies? Have we done any big infographics? Uh, is there anything, who, who, who um, do we have here that's uh, smart and can, you know, be on, uh, on, be interviewed or, or th those sorts Branded of things. Who, who are the assets? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Brand ambassador type folks. Um, and then, you know, the other place, you know, if you, if you want to look at it, um, I guess from a, from a, wh where have we already gotten links? You could look at what pages have already gotten links. Uh, if they've been getting links naturally or organically, those might be great places to start. Uh, you may have maybe sitting on top of linkable assets. If you're in a, you know, a larger company, um, you may not know wh what people are linking to or why. But again, the problem with starting there is that page already has lots of links and you may not need um, necessarily uh, to have this page ranking higher. It might have probably already ranks pretty high if it has all, if it's got these links organically. So really, you know, um, but but what that what that tells you though is the types of content that do organically attract links. And I think that's a useful and interesting thing to know as you're designing um, next steps for your uh, whichever pages you're selecting. Um, but I think at the you know at the outset you're really asking what are what are the objectives of this you know this link building initiative? Why are we doing this? Um, are we trying to get brand visibility? Are we trying to get visibility around product launch or links to a new product as it's launching? Um, and then you're really asking, what can we offer to these various publishers that, that, that would get them to say, yes, what are the assets here? Or get them to link or publish. So, you know, data studies, um, uh, a, an accessible, uh, you know, someone accessible who can answer interview questions, the, the brand ambassador type person. Um, these are the types of things you're on the lookout for, for sure. Uh, there could be white papers, old white papers. A lot of times, if, if, something's be, if something was written and was put behind a paywall and then it's been forgotten, perhaps, you know, if an old legion, there, there could, you could be, you should, can and should be poking around for that kind of content as well, because maybe now we can take it out from behind the paywall and try to build some links to it, use it as a, as an asset or something to, to um, create a, a link, you know, a link purpose for, for a given publisher. Um, and in some cases, more, we, push me around more. So, yeah, go ahead, James. Oh, I was just going to say, in some cases, we don't necessarily need to reinvent the wheel if we already have one, too, but that wheel has been cordoned off yeah. to an editorial section of the site or something like that. So, it, you know, if there is a white paper that's published even publicly or a blog post, a really nice resource page, maybe doing a summary of some element of that, of that page and putting it on the sales page, that main high-converting landing page, so we have our citable element there, and then just a link to, uh, you, you know, that, that full editorial yeah review that's somewhere else. That's another great way to quickly get a citable element onto, onto a page. Yeah, make your sales pages have something that people would want to link to. So I think that's linkability of sales pages is something that we've we've really been working at and, and thinking a lot about too. Um, awesome. Awesome. Well, but I, I'm, Mark, I'm, it, I'm learning so much yeah, as we but, talk here. So I, I, I love this, this topic. So I want to try and move kind of along in, in the process a little bit to 
link prospecting, which is like when, when I was doing a lot of this kind of work, this was like my least favorite task to do. It was the hard work of like actually doing all those site commands that you mentioned and everything like that. Um, you know, I, I wonder, I think what, what's happened in, in between my beginnings and now is that tools have come into play. And I think we're getting closer to your expertise at this one. You might be familiar with some tools that could help with prospecting. What are some tools that, that Citation Labs has to help with this? And why do you think tools are so helpful in that link prospecting phase? So we have a tool that uh, we built long ago, 10, over 10 years ago now with uh, Darren Shaw, uh, built it out for us from LightSpark. Uh, it's called the Link Prospector, and it's essentially a, a SERP scraper, a Google SERP scraper. Um, it enables uh, multiple queries. Uh, it has some preset of advanced operators, depending on the types of pages you're looking for. Um, so that's the type of tool that just enables you to find lots of prospects kind of all at once. Mm -hmm. But that all presupposes that you've lined up your asset, you know what the publisher types you're looking for, and you have a good sense of who you need to be sending emails to. Um, so the other, some of the other kind of more common approaches that we see are like co-citation analysis or who's linking, you know, who's linking to this. If, if a competitor has created a similar page to the one you want to build links to and they've already built links to it, you go out and see who have they gotten links from. Um, that, that kind of approach can be, can be useful or helpful, I think. Uh, nothing wrong with it. You might as well go get them if you can. Um, uh, but from a prospecting perspective, you know, in the way we work, the way we conduct our outreach, we have to send, we have to email lots of people. Um, and so we need as, as many potential uh, publishers to, to send emails to as possible. So we do, you know, we, we had to level up from the link prospector on our end and we've we're spending like 10 grand a month on proxies. And I mean, we're really going crazy with our prospecting now in terms of the volume of, of uh, queries we're, we're, we're looking, you know, the amount of, of publishers we're looking for every month. Um, so why do I bring that up? I don't know. Uh, I don't think I'm quite answering your question. Um, ask, re, re, help, rewind me and ask me again. Well, I, I think if, if people are uh, dread prospecting as much as I did, so when I was using this, perhaps tools could come in handy. Perhaps tools could help make this work a little bit more efficient, a little bit better. Um, you guys have some tools, and it seems like it's, it's a, a logical place for us to kind of speed this up um, rather than trying to do all this work manually with, you know, in your, all those, those site commands that you were talking about at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. So absolutely, it's much easier. You still have to know the commands, though, Mark. I'm sorry. Uh, you have to do your homework, buddy. Um, or you can make Greg do it. Uh, but it's it's uh, that's the part that, to me, the fun thing is always having a good sense of a target publisher. And once you have that, then the prospecting gets really fun because it's like, you know, looking for seashells on the beach. You know, it's just, oh, there's one, oh, there's one. Uh, so you just, and, and the advanced operators really help you isolate these types of, of signifiers. You know, if you're looking for blogs, one of my favorites is in URL colon blog. You don't always, you shouldn't always look that way because not every blog is called a blog or says blog in the URL string, but it is a really effective way to isolate uh, a, the existence of a blog, right? Or the, at least the mention. Now, the other piece could be you could add slashes into that query. So it could be in URL slash blog slash, which is commonly how that, um, I don't know the technical terminology for it, but it's commonly how this is, uh, the, the, the um, WordPress, I think mostly, uh, kind of presents the presence of a blog on the website. So that, so, so now if you've, if you've done a query like, um, uh, let's say um, we're looking for, on the sofa for sofas and it was, we, we, we needed something in parenting and how to get your kids to clean up the sofa. I don't know. Well, 
Um, and if you figure it out, tell me. But uh, so you're looking for parenting blogs. So if you did parenting in colon blog, number one, Google's only going to show you down to a thousand. So you're only getting a thousand blogs. We want ten thousand blogs. So how, what could we do? Well, we could also do parenting uh, then in URL sure. uh, slash blog slash. And so all these other blogs that we had, we'd already seen, um, some of them will appear again, but some of them will be fresh. We won't have seen them before. And we could also do slash articles slash. Uh, so now we're going to find websites that are probably a little more, uh, you know, maybe uh, ad supported because they actually call them articles and not blog posts. So we might be veering into, you know, ad supported uh, publisher types. But now we can, what, what's awesome though is knowing all of these different types of um, operators and, and signals to, to look for. You can just have, you can just know that you're looking for parenting and cover a lot of ground. And this is why uh, I love prospecting because it's once you, once you have a good sense of the topic or the topic types that are going to uh, bring you back your target publisher, you can really uh, cover a lot of ground after that with advanced operators and with the types of, um, uh, you know, uh, URL string modifiers, just knowing what to look for in the, the URL string and then asking Google just to show you that. Uh, so this way you can you can find a lot more prospects. Awesome. I mean, and he makes it sound easy because he's he's written two books on it and he's been doing it for so long. But if you start to think about the pieces that he's talking about here in terms of that initial ideation, making sure you've got the right citable elements on the page. And then this this piece now where we're, we're sourcing uh, potential publishers, we're doing this discovery kind of process. And you, you kind of listen to the nuances that he's tying in here. There's a lot of creative ideation going on in the background kind of thing so w one piece that we often see is people just want to they think oh we, we need links let's go let's go build some links sort of mm -hmm. thing and there really there really is a lot of thought process and planning really thinking through what you can provide and that's that's of value and how you tie the the client or your own websites uh, the audience into the pub the potential publishers audience yeah. as well because you've got to connect mm -hmm. those dots for the publisher to help them understand why there's value in publishing this content so a lot of these pieces here you can kind of um, bring together to look at more of a holistic picture of link building no I mean I'm, I'm this is outstanding stuff so I want to get to I'm, I'm making this a little bit about me I'm sorry guys but I want to get to actually my favorite part of link building which I always want to get to outreaching. That's like my, my thing is I want to get there probably too fast now that I'm, I'm listening to this. But, uh, you know, <laughs> I love you know like building a relationship, designing the pitch. This kind of stuff is, is very, very interesting. But this is where I think a lot of things could go wrong. Um, everyone listening has probably had that horrible experience of getting a out, cold outreach that was just terrible. And um, oh, yeah. I... I you know, I fear that Never. this may be too too broad of a question <laughs> or an overly broad question, but when it comes to outreach, what doesn't work and what does? We are just beginning to learn that, okay, after a decade. <laughs> yeah. He's down um, he's down playing. He's down playing. No, I'm serious. James, you can you can be my interpreter, but like basically <laughs> I feel like we've there, there's a lot of our operations that are where we've you know, we've, we've been growing and as we've grown, we, we kind of outgrow certain processes. And I think the outreach side is one that we're, we, we've, we, we're just beginning to uh, put the lens of data on top of, which is in some ways, maybe we should have started there, sure. Uh, but, you know, um, we're really, I would say, just be getting to this point where, uh, you know, in the next three to six months, we could tell you, Mark, here is how... In, in the way we do outreach, here's the best way. Here's some of the learnings we've had. Um, some of the stuff we've been experimenting with is like, um, you know, mentioning to the publisher how we're going to promote them or how this this piece that they they're going to publish uh, could be beneficial to them. Um, so that wasn't something we had really done much and this has been I think we started it about a year ago uh, and we're just beginning to be able to measure what impact will that will that have will that really have um, so there's a lot of you know on 
I think one of the go-to kinds of presentations or articles to write for link building agency or digital PR is the outreach side because it really is it's the exciting part it's ooh, what's going to happen you know it's you finally planted the seed and when you've watered it and now you're waiting for it to sprout you know it's really an exciting moment um, but it's also one that I think is really easy to overthink uh, <laughs> I know from experience, it's really easy to overthink. Uh, so um, uh, on the outreach side, I'd have to say, you know, we're, we're pretty straightforward right now. Um, just, hey, we'd love to uh, write an article for you, or we've got a, a, a topic that we think would be great for your blog. What do you think? Uh, stuff like that. And it's we're not real super, um, you know, Mark, you wouldn't, I don't think you'd be super uh, inspired mm -hmm. by us. Um, but James, I, I do downplay and underplay. James, overplay now, please. Hyperbolize yeah, that, my um, hypoperbolize. The, the, the keep it short and simple method is a good method, as Garrett was, but that's really the, what he's describing there. It's not that, you know, we've already done the qualifying of the publisher. We've, we're really looking to find the publishers that align with the client's website as, as an agency or as an in-house with your, with your website and your content. That piece is sort of baked into the outreach that we're doing. So, yes, we want it to be straightforward and not a huge block of text because we know they're not going to see that. But at the same time, it's got to be personalized to a point where you don't have that experience that you mentioned. And we get those all the time. You know, our, <laughs> our site says link building all over it, and we still get pitches from someone yeah. saying, hey, we want to we have them. this piece of content. I, I we have this guys. article. Yeah, yeah. I've got a guy now that's like, hey, I do these video. I can write an article that we – I love your blog so much. You're so amazing, which I agree. <laughs> but, like, but then it's just, hey, we've got some stuff on video, <laughs> like video sales. How to sell right. on video? I'm like, you didn't read my blog, really. But it's really <laughs> nice. And the outreach is wonderful. It's just poor quality. You know, we were poorly qualified. But I but, love, but, but I, I, I love this stuff. I mean, it's it's always to me like a little bit of an inspiration, or like, oh, that's a nice element, or oh, that's a nice detail. I would say study it all. The stuff you don't like is still a lesson. Mm -hmm. It it didn't make you click. It's it's real easy just to you know. Um, shove it off but why didn't it you know why didn't it, it interest you what was bad about it and that you can you can learn from that as well i think or, it's you know, a good I data have. point for it's a good data point for what not to do yeah. sure, sure. In, in a lot of cases there certainly is something to that something to that and it doesn't have to be a really sophisticated process you know we're all we're all we're SEOs, so we could easily run a screaming frog crawl and look at the title. You know, even if you don't visit the website directly, so f do something to uh, <laughs> to have something that you can mention in your pitch, and then use another column in that in that output yeah. of the export of the spreadsheet and write your pitch out. And you know, mention the mention something that's unique to the website or something like that. Try to make it stick a little bit. If if the entire ideation creative process isn't really extensive at least try to do something that's going to help you stand out a little bit and make sure it's relevant. That's the biggest oh, thing is I, thank you, it's James. Be relevant. Yes, and it's got to it's got to convey publisher benefit. Yeah. And this is the the place where, you know, we used to do a lot of what we call links and resource page link building. And this is where we've got content on, you know, uh, maybe it's this massive guide on how to start a business for seniors. Or, you know, um, so we're going to go out to web pages that have collections of resources for seniors on maybe it's a hospital website or a library. And so we, then we go and pitch to that, to that linking page. And this is what link building was. I mean, like from a scale perspective, this is what it was for, uh, you know, a decade plus. And there's still a lot of agencies that do that. Or not, I don't know if there's a lot, but there's... Uh, there's still people doing links this way and, and, and providing benefit this way. Uh, but but um, the benefit there is, is very different when you're pitching into a library than if you're pitching to CNN or if you're pitching to a, you know, a senior care facility that has a blog, right? Because you want links from all three of them. Uh, there's no reason not to get them. Uh, so, so um, but the approach would be very different. The benefit that you're pitching 
uh, would be very different to each one. Uh, so that's, that's the piece on outreach that I do think is fundamental, uh, is, is making sure that the publisher benefit is, is front and center. Uh, rather than your, you know, hey, I'd love to get a link from you. Uh, you know, how about it? How about you link to this? It's wonderful. It's a great piece of content. And it's like, no, your audience really seems to love this kind of stuff. And I hear something similar to it. And, uh, you know, that's anyhow, don't don't use that one either. But <laughs> no, that was a great idea. example. That was a great example of personalizing it. The video guy didn't do it that you mentioned. And Mark, the one you mentioned that wasn't done there. But there's th those little elements there that, you know, can jump out. You're only going to get a few seconds anyway. So yeah. you got to make those few seconds count. Very important. Yep. Yeah, very important. Well, it's sales. It's email marketing. You know, it really is. It's email marketing. Yeah, let me let me shift gears a little bit. I, I want to talk about um, Google, and they'll come out with these things. I can remember when Matt Cutts was doing all his videos, and they would come out, and they'd be like, uh, you know, ominous about guest posts or about there's like sure. the guidelines about excessive reciprocal link building, or there's all these warnings. Uh, you know, how do you guys absorb this? How do you know what's really uh, you know? out of bounds and what's really okay and maybe within reason it's 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 acceptable to do and and uh, these these warnings from google over the years have like i feel like caused earthquakes on seo twitter and elsewhere um how do you guys sure. interpret these messages from google well with a grain or two of salt of course um you know there it's they're so uh careful um cryptic uh and just kind of <laughs> not i mean that you can trust that what they're saying is true in this context or whatever the narrow context of the statement is but there might be some uh some aspects that are are not necessarily either truthful or you know don't pay any attention to the man behind the curtain kind of thing mm -hmm. um so from a guest posting perspective, I mean, f fundamentally, if, if it's a bylined guest post, like any of my pieces on search engine land or the piece uh, we did on Moz, well, that's a guest post. You know, uh, Bill Seabald was talking about that on, on uh, another webinar recently. It's just a guest post is it's a very normal it, 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 PR calls it a bylined article it, that it's, it's been done for a, I'm about to say centuries. I don't think centuries, but it's been for done minute. for a long time. It's been done for a minute. Internet centuries. Okay. It's been done for internet centuries. Um, so, it, you know, there, yes. Can it be taken too far? Absolutely. Are there PBNs out there? Absolutely. Uh, but there's also lots of real publishers who are open to collaboration. Um, should you be careful around overdoing things? Certainly uh, over optimizing anchor text, you should be very careful. Um, but the other place we look is the SERP itself. Where are we playing? Who are we up against? What, how are they, what, what kinds of uh, linking contexts do they have? And, you know, that's really where we start. And that's, you know, if, if they've got lots of links to their pages, well, we, we, we will need them too. And so uh, we, we use the links that are already existing to give us a sense of context that's going to work. And then we, we go from there. Um, so ta I think it's real, like SEOs, we get real caught up on tactic A, good, tactic B, bad. Um, broken link building was like this, uh, it, it, it was the, the be all end all of link building for a while. I think digital PR kind of blew it out of the water as, as from a tactical perspective, but it was very un, it was very difficult to scale uh, broken link building. And it really didn't apply to, in, in most circumstances, to right. most, uh, in, to, to most industries. Um, so it, it's, it was one of those things where it just really didn't fit. And I think coming back all the way back to what, is our objective with link building. What are we trying to accomplish with link building? Uh, that needs to really be your starting point for what kinds of tactics are going to make sense here, as opposed to what tactic do we want to learn how to do and then get good at, and then, oh, wait a minute, that doesn't actually help with brand visibility. 
which was our key objective. So um, it's and then and then yeah, I think um, a tactic that gets a bad name like guest posting, uh, it's really easy to just um, you know dismiss it as as an approach. Um, so I what I always come back to is who are we up against in the mm -hmm. SERPs? What is the what do the links look like here? What are the link gaps between our our page and the other other <laughs> players in this space? Uh, what are the linking contexts like? What do their links look like? Are they where are they coming from? Uh, what types of what are the titles of the linking pages that can tell us a lot about audience, about publisher types as well, uh, and then just kind of build from there. And, and that's that's where we really see the most uh, um, uh, useful and, and I think as as safe as possible uh, link <laughs> campaign design approach. Is, is, it, it is a great question, though, because it is it, we do find people, you know, kind of s scared of, of guest posting as a tactic. Um, but, you know, it's it's not the only shouldn't be the only tactic you're using. And uh, it's it's uh, it can be super, <laughs> super effective. So right. I, to add, you can ask that question again and also make James answer it, because I probably <laughs> veered a little bit out of the. Uh, line of your of your questioning well let's try it james how would you answer yeah that's it's a very fair question it's certainly top of mind and it sometimes seems scary when we pay attention we try to pay attention to what google is saying and it seemingly appears that they're saying that you, you know we, we that links don't matter or something similar to some of the takeaways that we get you, you know often but i would just reiterate and kind of underscore what garrett said about you know really looking at the data that's available we can also sort of play google and look at what data is available and sometimes we don't have uh, 500,000 backlinks from unique domains all with a domain authority or authority score or whatever sort of authority metric we want to use that's 80 or more sort of thing and so in the absence of that you know it's it's kind of one of those things if we have carte blanche to choose exactly what we want to use and there is plenty there are plenty of options we go to a buffet for example and all the food is lined up where well, we're going to be selective probably about what we select but in the absence of an entire smorgasbord and laid out in front of us we're going to choose from what we have available kind of thing and i think you know we can use that analogy from the perspective of all of the data that google has across you know millions of mini algorithms and the those big tools like big parts of the algorithm or the process like rank brain and selecting from all of the things available and and then determining the highest to lowest value essentially and ranking accordingly sometimes there isn't that much link related data available so garrett mentioned it a couple of times but paying attention to the competitors in the space at the keyword level too what what are the competitors the top 10 competitors for example for a particular keyword looking for at their backlink yeah. profile yeah. Uh, in in whatever in whatever your tool of choice is, getting a sense for what we're really up against. It's not just about the number of backlinks. We know that for sure. It's not just account. It's also quality and relevance and trust and all of these other factors. But it also is about the backlinks. So looking at those backlinks specifically and seeing who is on. There are only ten on page one. Sometimes fewer competitors to review. So if this is an important keyword, it probably behooves you or us or whomever's doing the research to dig into that a little bit and seeing really what they're up against and that can help determine what the best tactics are going to be could be guest posting might might be something else maybe it's pr because so much of the uh, of those so many of those backlinks are really high profile backlinks and and we know we need to uh, act accordingly essentially so looking at that competitive set is really important well unbelievable well this has been you guys have been so generous with your time thank you so much for this and i want to kind of wrap Thanks up with it. everybody's favorite part of the show this is where greg gifford gives me a question with no context so i know nothing oh. and you know nothing it's a high wire act for both of us <laughs> and for garrett french and, and james worth he has seattle sushi does that ring a bell to either of you oh. me <laughs> i think um, that would be garrett yeah that expression greg and i um had a, a wonderful uh sushi dinner at ma's local Mark, we didn't even dig into local. I know. Buddy, look, we love local link building. Uh, I have a, another agency that just does local. That's why I was at Moss Local, though. 
Seattle sushi night, let me tell you, it was an amazing night. Um, this was when I, Greg, Greg was so gracious. I was at um, Ma's Local, and I think it was 2016, and, and I didn't know anybody. I was, you know, just, it, he completely took me under his wing. He took me to all the great restaurants. And then that night, one of the nights, uh, he, uh, Greg, myself, and Noah Lerner went to a wonderful sushi restaurant. And this, it was such a wonderful night because it was so inspiring uh, to, to Greg and I because we were so excited by Noah. He was just this, and he just had this, like, he was a rising, it felt like he was a rising star about to, you know, enter the, the night sky. Uh, yeah, and, and we, we both encouraged him to go do his own thing and, uh, you know, really uh, pursue. And he was just a really um, creative, like, uh, real, um, had a lot of, just a lot of uh, energy. So this is just a really fun night. Uh, drank lots of sake, had lots of amazing sushi. Like, I really never had sushi that good. I'm from Kentucky, so we never have, like, good sushi. I'm easy to impress when I go bourbon, out, of, yeah. out of the state. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Your bourbon isn't going to impress me, but the sushi will. Um, so it was uh, just a wonderful, wonderful night. Um, and we, we still, will like, randomly talk about it. Just remember at sushi night, we were like, Go Noah. And so it was a really, you know, I think for Greg and I, it was like, it was just kind of like a high five things, like to this day where we like, we know we really helped, uh, you know, encourage someone at, at a great moment. Uh, so I think we both just feel good about that. I know I do. And of course, Noah, he didn't really need our help, but we like to, it, it makes us feel good to, to think that. So I, it was a great, it was a wonderful night. Thank you for letting me, uh, tell that story i am a massive fan of of noah's and and yours garrett and right. now yours james nice to, great to have you on the show Thanks, mark um you know you're, you said it though garrett like there's like so many questions i had for you i want to talk about zip sprout my seo manager andrew is going to kill me for not bringing that up with you we may have to have <laughs> you guys back on because i mean we just you, you've been so generous with your time but like we were usually like a half hour 20 minutes on this show and we've been at it an hour here so I think this this is reason for us uh, to have you guys back on another time. And for now, I'm just going to say, you know, thank you for coming on. I'm going to sign off for now. I'll give you guys a virtual cheers. You guys have been just drinking, uh, you know, vodka out of uh, a Brita filter there. For yeah, the never clear. Show. So yeah. Never clear. Thank it's you again down. for coming on. We'll be back next week for another episode of Sunset Search.